Russia and China are considering building a $100 billion tunnel across the Bering Strait, providing the first physical link between Asia and North America. The Bering Strait is a thin passage of water separating Russia and Alaska. It is only 83 kilometers wide and has a max depth of only 50 meters, with two large islands directly in the middle of it. Due to this seemingly ideal geographic situation, the idea of building a connection across the Bering Strait is being explored. The idea was first introduced in 1892, when American structural engineer Joseph Strauss, the later project engineer for the Golden Gate Bridge, created the first bridge proposal. It was presented to the Russian Empire, but was rejected. In 1904, a group of American railroad magnates introduced the first tunnel design. A year later, Russian Tsar Nicholas II approved the project. However, after being debated by officials, it was finally turned down in 1907. Due to the Russian Revolution, World War I, the Great Depression, and World War II, the concept was cast aside for several decades. Then, in 1958, American structural engineer Tung Yen Lin reintroduced it. He suggested an 85-kilometer-long bridge across the strait, nicknamed the Intercontinental Peace Bridge. It would have both a highway and rail links and would be the longest sea crossing in the world, 30 kilometers longer than the current record holder, the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge. Lin hoped the connection would foster commerce and understanding between the people of the US and Russia. Unfortunately, though, it had several issues. Although the region has no icebergs, it does have ice flows, thin sheets of floating ice. These flows could produce forces up to 44 meganewtons on a bridge pier. This would be a major structural challenge. Moreover, the bridge's exposed steel would become brittle with the region's cold temperatures. To solve this, the whole structure would likely have to be covered with concrete. Lastly, due to the weather conditions, the bridge's highway would have to be closed for much of the year. These issues, combined with Lin's death in 2003, caused the proposal to fade away. Then, in 2007, Russia proposed the TKM Link, a 6,000-kilometer-long rail and oil link connecting Kamsamulsk on Amur and Yakutsk in Russia with Alaska. It would include a 103-kilometer-long tunnel across the Bering Strait, with ventilation shafts on the Diomedes Islands. It would have two rail tubes for both freight and high-speed passenger traffic, along with a central service tube. In 2007, this tunnel was estimated to cost 10 to 12 billion US dollars, with the larger project costing 65 billion dollars. It would take around 12 years to construct. Such a tunnel would have major benefits. First of all, it would physically link North and South America to the Old World. You could ride by train from San Francisco to Beijing in a day and a half and travel by land all the way from Cape Town to Miami. A tunnel would provide a safer, cheaper, and faster way to transport freight between Asia and North America. Cargo would be able to travel from Shanghai to Chicago four times faster than by ship. Moreover, a tunnel could help develop a global renewable energy transmission corridor feeding wind and tidal power across vast distances. Furthermore, a tunnel would boost the economies of northeastern Russia and Alaska, further integrating them into the world economy. By providing a physical link, a tunnel would also improve trade and cooperation between Russia, China, and the US. Lastly, it would be a feat of engineering, the longest tunnel in the world connecting the continents of Earth. Unfortunately, though, such a tunnel would also have a long list of issues. First of all, the region is Arctic tundra. The location has long, dark winters with average lows of negative 20 degrees Celsius or negative 4 degrees Fahrenheit. This would restrict work to five months a year during the summer, significantly increasing the total construction time. In addition, the land around the strait is permafrost. If rail tracks were laid on it, and the permafrost then thawed, the tracks would sink and be damaged. Moreover, a tunnel would have to withstand earthquakes and safely manage fires, 
Furthermore, the region is undeveloped. Currently, on the Russian side, there are no railways for 3,200 kilometers, and the nearest highway, the Anadir Highway, which is currently under construction, is still over 400 kilometers away. On the American side, there are no railways or highways for 1,000 kilometers. And even still, the railway in Alaska does not connect to the lower 48 states. Because of this, massive railways would have to be built on each side. The cost of this infrastructure would be huge, way more than the actual connection itself. This lack of infrastructure would also create logistics problems in getting workers and materials to the tunnel construction site. The nearest port is in Anchorage, 1,000 kilometers away. On top of all this, the US and Russia use different rail gauges. This would cause major logistics issues, forcing all goods to be transferred between trains. Another issue is gaining US support, whose stance on the project is uncertain. Lastly, even if the tunnel and rail line were built, it would still be faster to fly by airplane between the US and Asia. For this reason, the tunnel would mostly be used for freight. Despite all these issues, a tunnel across the Bering Strait is still technically feasible. Since 2007, the concept has advanced. In 2008, Vladimir Putin, the then Prime Minister of Russia, approved the TKM link. Then, in August 2011, the Russian government approved the project. In 2014, Chinese transportation experts announced their own 21st century concept. They proposed a 10,000 kilometer long high speed rail line connecting Northeast China to the United States with a tunnel across the Bering Strait. This project would cost an estimated $105 billion. Finally, in 2015, it was reported that China would possibly collaborate with Russia to build a tunnel. However, since then, due to the numerous difficulties, neither country has advanced their proposal past the conceptual stage. In the future, though, these difficulties could be smaller. Within the next century, climate change could make large swaths of Siberia, Canada, and Alaska more habitable. This would lead to further development and emigration in the regions, justifying a tunnel across the Bering Strait. However, this thawing of permafrost would also release large amounts of greenhouse gases while harming the environment. So hopefully this does not happen. In review, a Bering Strait tunnel could have huge benefits, improving intercontinental trade and cooperation. However, due to the current infrastructure and geographic conditions, a connection would be very expensive and difficult to build. If you enjoyed this video, it would be amazing if you like and subscribe for more videos very similar to this one. Also, remember to check out the comments and join the conversation. Thanks for watching and see you next time.